Fingerprints, all amazingly unique. No two people in the world have exactly the same placement of ridge details, even identical twins. And prints are permanent. Unless altered through scarring, fingerprints stay the same from birth through death. They are the keys to a person's identity. This is where APHIS comes in, the Regional Automated Fingerprint Identification System, a database of more than 600,000 print records from all of the region's police agencies, with more coming in every day. Quality of prints, uh, we want to make sure we get the best quality possible. Each of King County's regional detention facilities relies on a special team of ID techs to record the prints. With every inmate that comes in, we, they need to be fingerprinted and photographed. 24-7, of course. Um, there's usually four to five people on a shift. An electronic live scan has replaced the old, outdated ink print system. Information is now uploaded in moments instead of days. Well, a live scan is, is simply a computer with a glass platen, and we roll the fingerprints on to the glass platen, and the prints are electronically submitted to our APHIS database. APHIS uses the unique arrangement of ridge characteristics on a print to compare them to the thousands of others on file. The computer produces a list of possible matches within minutes. Uh, maybe this short ridge that kind of splits in two actually looks a little bit like a wrench. I see the, that same feature there. The computer may narrow down the search, but it's a trained 10 print examiner that carefully compares them and determines a match. We have to be absolutely certain because a person's life could be riding on the decision we make as th to their identity. Actually, a very short ridge there, same thing there. And so um, you know, it's a hit. <laughs> we can get a response back to the operator, the f um, life scan operator, within minutes in a lot of cases. Fast information that can be critical to an officer on the street or to a jail's intake center. You know, so we fingerprint someone and he comes back as a convicted felon who's known to assault officers. You know, that helps these guys out so they can, you know, watch him accordingly and handle him accordingly also. The 10 print unit cross checks the information with the courts and prosecutor's office, including any new aliases before sending it to the state patrol and FBI. What we're trying to do is make sure all the information is correct um, on our booking assignment sheet um, before we go ahead and send it off to the state who uh, will take the information, update uh, uh, the person's rap sheet um, or their criminal history. It's that kind of information that officers like Patrolman Brendan Karen rely on every day. In the spring of 2009, he and his team arrested one 22-year-old Terrell Yarborough in Tukwila. He gave us several different names, several different dates of birth, which we call that the name game. Yarbrough's prints were sent to APHIS. Examiner Eva Hess was working the swing shift. She couldn't match the prints to anyone in the regional system. So we always go the extra step and fax the FBI to make sure that we're covering our bases. A while later, we got a phone call from APHIS that of who he really was and the fact that he had a homicide warrant out of Detroit. They got a hit and found out um, he was wanted for a homicide and um, murder and attempted murder, armed robbery, and home invasion. I believe our department got a phone call soon after that from the homicide investigator in Detroit. Uh, couldn't believe that this guy was in custody and said under no conditions did you let him go. So uh, they were very excited that we caught him. The ability to quickly verify someone's identity with fingerprints and share that information, that's what makes the difference. You know, if somebody's lying about who they are, you know, our unit is, is, is pretty good at, at, at identifying them and letting whoever, whatever agency needs to know. I've been doing this for almost 25 years and back in the day when you had to dig through cards or, or you know, just assume a person was who they said they were, you know, it made your job very, very difficult. Um, we used to have to take fingerprints, mail them off to the FBI, get them back, and then you get your hit, you know, three weeks later, that's, that does you no good. But not all new prints find a match. If the prints don't match any records in the database, they're given a new APHIS number and compared with the more than 30,000 unidentified prints from unsolved crimes. By checking each new arrest against the database, examiners often identify suspects in many unsolved crimes. 
ID techs and 10 print examiners also help identify patients at Harborview Medical Center by fingerprinting them and searching the prints through APHIS. And they work with the medical examiner's office to identify deceased persons. We handle not only King County Sheriff's Office and its contract city's fingerprint work, but also Seattle Police Department has received funding from this program and um, we handle the suburban city's fingerprint work too. So it really is all inclusive King County. King County's APHIS section, working 24-7 behind the scenes to uncover the truth, solve crimes, and keep our communities safe.